That was the news that was made last night. The House Intel Committee with a preliminary report, no evidence of collusion whatsoever. And that was Mike Conway, Congressman Conway of the House Intel Committee, saying that no evidence of collusion on anybody's part. But it certainly seems that in another way that there was a, a lot of collusion as it relates to Hillary Clinton and her campaign. And then, of course, we've got the revelation that the former director of national intelligence, James Clapper, leaked information as it relates to the dossier to the uh, to CNN, which uh, could be a violation of law in and of itself. Anyway, here to help us sort through all of this from the Freedom Caucus, its chairman, Mark Meadows, uh, North Carolina congressman, and from the great state of Ohio, Congressman Jim Jordan is with us. Welcome both of you uh, back to the program. Glad you're with us. Great to Good be with, with you, Sean. Sean. Thanks so much. All right, let's start with this, well, interim report. This is one part of the many investigations that are ongoing. What is your take, Congressman Meadows? Well, I mean, it, we show what we've known for some time is that there's no collusion between the Trump campaign and and literally uh, the allegations that have been made. And so it, it not only verifies that, but, I, but, Sean, it's important to point out, we have spent more time uh, investigating uh, this uh, Democrat paid for dossier and the supposed collusion between the Trump campaign and uh, the Russians. And and yet uh, there's nothing here to, to really support that. So it, it's time that we get on uh, to the people's business, and that's the, the real Trump agenda, and that's making sure that we put the government back in its rightful place, uh, and that's uh, the owner's should be the American people, and that's what we need to be focused on. It should be what we've been focused This has been a 14-month investigation, and now you can go back and you can listen to Adam Schiff, who I think wants to be a host on cable television, Congressman Jordan, because, I mean, the guy's been on only, you know, nearly 300 times. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to understand from my, my perspective here, after 14 months and they have nothing, you know, yeah. how is it people are saying, well, we need to investigate even further? What are they talking about? Well, there were, there were two takeaways from yesterday, Sean. Uh, the first was they, they told us what we already knew, which was there's no collusion between the Trump campaign, no coordination between the Trump campaign and Russia to influence the election. The second thing is they confirmed what we all suspected, namely that James Clapper was leaking information. And not just any information. It looks like he leaked information after that critical meeting on January 6th where the intelligence community goes up and tells President-elect Trump about the dossier. And I think they did that meeting so that they could give the dossier legitimacy. And then Mr. Clapper supposedly leaks to CNN and then BuzzFeed prints the whole thing. Remember, at that point, the dossier had already been used, had already been taken to the FISA court to secure the warrant. So those, in my mind, were the two takeaways yesterday. One confirmed what we already knew, no collusion between Trump and Russians. The second, what we all suspected, Clapper was leaking information. But, but the language is phenomenal. It, it says we found no evidence of collusion uh, coordination or conspiracy between the Trump campaign and the Russians, how the anti-Russia, anti-Trump research literally made its way from Russian sources to the Clinton campaign. And it's problematic because we have people in the intelligence community, you know, leaking information yep. to the news yep. media here. Now, this doesn't include the unmasking scandal. This doesn't include Uranium One. This doesn't include the dossier. This this is very specific towards the, the, the whole charge that we've heard for since the election in 2016. And that is that, oh, there's been Trump-Russia collusion. There has not. There's no evidence of it. Does, has anybody ever on the Democratic side presented any evidence of it? I have not seen it. Well, and there's no evidence of it, it, Sean. You know, I think, I think Jim makes a good point. One of the key components here is that James Clapper being a leaker to the media and being the source that authenticates a document that, quite frankly, was a Democrat campaign opposition research document, gave it, gave it authenticity where, where all of a sudden it took on a life of its own. And so, uh, you know, his particular role should be one uh, to keep the America secrets. Instead, he was out there spilling the beans and trying to create a narrative that we now have spent 14 months trying to investigate. Well, uh, the bottom line is, where do we go from here? And, and what about Robert Mueller? Because Robert Mueller seems to have moved very far away from what his original mandate was supposed to be. Now, 
I'm looking at Rod Rosenstein and what I think are ridiculous comments by him, and that is that this special counsel is not an unguided missile. He's telling you, I don't believe there's any justification at this point for terminating the special counsel. Well, all I can tell the special counsel is doing is setting perjury traps for people and, and getting into people's finances that have nothing to do with Trump, nothing to do with Russia at all. Yeah, the best thing Rod Rosenstein could do is him and Jeff Sessions appoint a second special counsel, make sure that individual is not from the swamp, make sure they're from somewhere across the heartland, and the utmost character, and they do this investigation. And while that's going on, we in Congress need to continue to do our investigation. And it'd be nice if Rod Rosenstein would give us the information we ask him for. That's what he can do best. Uh, he can say what he wants about the Mueller investigation. What we know is to date, not one bit of evidence showing any type of coordination between the Russians and President Trump's campaign. So why don't Rod Rosenstein and Jeff Sessions just appoint that second special counsel and give us the information we need to do our investigation? Well, that's what. Go ahead. Sean, yeah. let, me, let me jump in there real quickly because Jim makes a valid point. You know, on oversight uh, in government reform committee, the Judiciary Committee, we've requested some 1.2 million documents, the same ones that the Inspector General is looking at. Yeah, but we want those in unredacted form. We've we've gotten less than ten thousand uh, unique documents to date, and uh, and we continue to find this is Rod Rosenstein, our administration. Uh, we continue to ask for it, and yet we get it in a fashion that, quite frankly, uh, has very little value. So it, it's important that we get the documents so that we can get to the bottom of the story. And I think you'll see it points in a very different direction towards Hillary. Hillary Clinton and the Democrat ca campaign to spin this narrative. Okay, so where do we go with Mueller at the end here? You know, because I played last night on Hannity. I played literally, you know, just a week and a half before the election, then President Obama telling Donald Trump to to, to stop whining that, that no serious person would ever think it's possible uh, that the Russians could ever, you know, have any impact on our electoral, electoral system or anybody else. And it turns out that if you go back to May of twenty. Well, 14, Devin Nunes of the House Intel Committee was warning Obama about this very specific threat and that yeah. Obama did nothing. And even, and it seems this narrative only emerged because they never thought Hillary was going to lose and she did lose. Yeah, I think uh, I think based on the fact that Mr. Clapper was leaking information, they were a little more concerned about undermining what the American people did when they made Donald Trump president than they, than they may have been in, in actually dealing with the issue at hand, namely the fact Russia was trying to so chaos in our electoral process. I don't think they did, but never the fact that, 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 that they were trying to do that. So, yeah, we should we got to take that seriously. Um, and let's hope that going forward, we're, we're, we're doing the things that need to be done. Well, I hope so. What about the second special counsel? It seems when the attorney general mentioned a Shannon Bream last week that, in fact, he had had now for a couple of months somebody that once worked at the DOJ now investigating a lot of these issues, especially FISA abuse issues. Where's that going to go? I mean, is that the prelude to a special counsel? Why is it taking so long to get a special counsel? Well, it shouldn't take so long. Uh, Jim and I have been asking for a second special counsel for almost seven months. It does look like we're closer to that decision than we've ever been before. But there's a reluctance, and the reluctance many times is to suggest, once you appoint that, that perhaps there was some type of bias within the Department of Justice and DOJ. And we believe, Jim and I both believe, Believe the vast majority of, of our FBI and DOJ officials are great public servants, but there is uh, enough suggestion that a few people acted inappropriately, specifically with regards to getting the FISA warrant and the way that it was done and using the dossier, that we believe only an independent third party could do that. So the pressure will continue to ramp up until hopefully uh, they make that appointment. Yeah. Sean, Sean, think about this. Uh, uh, James Comey has been fired. Andrew McCabe has stepped down. Jim Rabicki, former chief of staff, has, has left the, the FBI. Jim Baker, former general counsel, has been reassigned and demoted. Peter Strzok has been demoted and reassigned. Lisa Page demoted and reassigned. That's the top people at the FBI. So we're, we're supposed to think that they can investigate themselves. Of course we need a second special counsel. But let's make sure you don't pick someone from the swamp who's part of the deal 
deal. Pick someone outside of there and let's figure it out. And then let's let Congress get the information that we need so we can get answers for the American people. Well, I think that's the bottom line. I also think the American people, you know, in spite of all of this, we've been able to get a lot of things done. I, I was frankly stunned when the Heritage Foundation came out with their study that showed that the president has already accomplished 64 percent of his agenda, which was higher than Ronald Reagan's first year at 49 percent. Uh, and usually in first years of presidencies, we get a lot done. I think we could have gotten even a lot more of that done yeah. had, you know, we had more Freedom Caucus members in the House and the Senate. Uh, what do you guys both expect that will be accomplished legislatively this year? And does well, the president have the authority to get money for the wall from other places? Well, we're going to be about making this. that ahead, decision ahead, here shortly. Uh, you know, we're obviously looking at, at the omnibus spending package coming up here in the coming days. Uh, but the real thing is, and, and Jim and I think I'm, I think we both agree, uh, when it comes to funding sanctuary cities and, and really these mayors who are willing to oppose the president's agenda and really op op oppose the, the rule of law, uh, perhaps Perhaps the monies, the federal monies that go to law enforcement uh, officers in those areas should be held back until they're actually going to work and, and uphold the rule of law and make sure their communities are safer. And so that's one aspect that we can get done. But I can tell you the president is really uh, laser focused on making sure that not only we address the transportation needs, but we roll back regulations. So it's, it's actually working out pretty well. Regulations and taxes are down. The economy is up. ISIS is backpedaling. The embassy has gone to Jerusalem, and Gorsuch is on the Supreme Court. Pretty darn good first year by anyone's standard. You wouldn't know that if you listen to CNN, but if you listen to the right people and you talk to Americans across the country, they know it was a pretty darn good year for President Trump. Well, I think at the end of the day, are either one of you worried about Congress and which way that's going to go in 2018? Well, I think we're, we're worried, but, uh, you know, as Jim always says, it never hurts to do what you told the American people you would do. That's what this president is doing. He's weighing in campaign promise after another. Uh, I don't think we can sit back and, and coast for the next seven months. We need to be serious about you know, yep. moving forth the agenda. If we are, then the, the results will take care of themselves in November. And if not, then uh, then certainly we do have plenty to worry about in the midterms. All right. Thank you both for being with us. Jim Jordan, Ohio Congressman. Thank you. And Congressman Mark Meadows from North Carolina.